Hi, I'm Mike Hutchins, Extension Dairy Specialist at the University of Illinois. Today's program will discuss drought stress corn silage strategies in our current situation. Let's briefly review what we'll cover in today's program. First, we realize about a third of the U.S. corn crop currently is considered experiencing severe to moderate levels of drought stress. We'll also look at the feed value and pricing of drought stress corn silage, management considerations, and of course, finally, nitrate concerns and strategies to alleviate this risk. We'll look at three different maps. Here is the first one. You can see the red and dark brown areas are really under severe uh, stress conditions. So you can see large areas in the uh, uh, central plains, the Midwest, Southeast are under severe drought stress. And certainly this is provided by, as you can see, from several different governmental resources here. Our second map allows us to look a little more critically in terms of various areas in the various states. I look at Illinois and just shake my head looking at the tremendous amount of severe drought stress we have in southern Illinois, the northeast corner in central Illinois. That one in central Illinois is right in the heart of corn production. Look at our friends in Indiana and parts of Ohio and southern Michigan also extremely impacted with drought stress. And these are huge areas in the corn belt. So this is going to have some uh, real huge impacts in terms of feed production, food production, and the price of corn. Our third map looks ahead on several months to say, well, what, what, what might change? And then the, the sad part is you can see some areas are going to develop. I see some areas in Iowa, Nebraska, uh, certainly in the, in the eastern part of the United States that may even get worse as we change. You can also see some green areas that may improve. And, of course, that's down in the southeast and, of course, out in uh, New Mexico. Unfortunately, those aren't exactly large corn-producing agronomic states at this point. So certainly the three maps really challenge us to say this is certainly a severe problem. Let's begin by looking at nitrate guidelines and then look at what the strategies might be. Uh, this is the standard table that looks at uh, nitrate levels. Be keenly aware this is nitrate. It is not potassium nitrate. It is not nitrate nitrogen. So this is kind of the standard, but labs will vary from, from uh, how they express this number. You can see values below 4,400 parts per million, which is also 0.44% are considered safe. You can then read down the rest of these and you can see the strategies primarily is to do dilute down some of these high-risk feeds. Values over 17,000 are considered very dangerous and should not be fed to ruminant animals. Also be aware this is expressed in terms of a total ration dry matter. So certainly if a dairy farmer is feeding uh, some baled hay, some concentrates, some byproduct feeds with it, he naturally builds in somewhat of a dilution factor as well. So why worry about nitrate? Well, really the word is nitrite. Uh, the cow, the ruminant converts the nitrates to nitrites. The nitrites then can interfere uh, with the red blood cells, their ability to carry oxygen. So the animal really loses the, the oxygen carrying capacity of the blood, producing a product called methemoglobin. This then ends up into something called nitrate or nitrite poisoning. You can see some of the characteristics here. Again, you can pause and read these. I will not read these to you individually, but certainly a number of different factors can come into play at this stage of the situation. Notice on the bottom. Uh, death is imminent and within 30 minutes to four hours after the symptoms appear. Veterinarians can administer uh, pr products that can counter try to counteract this, but the timeline is really, really short at this stage of the game. So certainly this is a concern with drought stress corn silages and drought stress feedstuffs. We went to our diagnostic lab in Centralia, Illinois. Notice it's dated July 9th, so you're aware of what the timeline on this is. They had approximately 70 samples tested at this point. Remember our drought map. We are right in the heart of drought stress down there. 15% were considered safe. 30% were in that intermediate range, uh, uh, easy to manage, uh, 4,400 uh, parts per million to 7,000. Another 70, another 30% were in the high-end range, and 10% were over 15,000. Their highest value was 2% nitrate, which uh, was uh, 20,000 parts per million. Uh, this was a corn sample brought in about a day and a half after there was some rain in the local area. So they knew the history on this sample here. They had two what they would call toxic samples that it came in as of July 9th of 2012. So folks, it's out there. 
This table looks at different conversion rates. We, we talked a little bit about the first bullet item to uh, convert uh, from uh, nitrate to uh, from nitrates to uh, nitrogen or nitrate nitrogen to nitrate. You'd multiply by 4.4. So there's a whole bunch of conversion factors listed here. You can go back and forth depending on how your lab may be expressing it. Uh, some labs will use potassium nitrate because this is the common form uh, found in plant materials and they'll report it that way. So again, you've got a lot of conversion What's the take-home message here? If you're going to have your feeds tested, your corn silage is tested, be well aware what the, the, the answer comes back in units and be sure we understand. The previous PowerPoint was nitrate. NO3. And that's kind of the standard, although some labs will vary on the reporting coming back to you. The next question might be, well, what, what will the feed value of this product be? Uh, this is some work from the University of Maryland looking at a normal corn silage. In fact, that would probably be a little bit below average for Illinois. We expect to see our corn silage is somewhere around a 24, 25 ADF in that mid-40s NDF and a TDN around 71, 72 or 0 0.71 net energy uh, mcals per pound of dry matter. Here is drought stress, some, some examples, uh, a few ears. Uh, usually meaning there has been some pollination and some starch formation. You can see the protein content goes up. That's probably reflecting certainly some of the nitrates that are, that are found in that feedstuffs. Notice that we have a little bit more, a little higher quality with ears in because we'll have some limited amount of starch development in there. So you can see the fiber values. When there's no ear or barren stalks, you can see this ends up being pretty much a, a, a grass type forage. And of course, corn is grass. So not a big surprise there at this stage of the game. Uh, those values could be even better if the corn was, for example, very short. In Illinois, we see some fields being drought stressed now that are at two or three feet, and that would be a very vegetative phase grass and would be a little bit higher value. So certainly you can see it's going to be less valuable than normal corn silage and, of course, usually containing much less starch, which is so important in many of our beef and dairy rations. One practice you'll read in the literature, and that is, well, you can chop it higher. And uh, this is some data from Wisconsin looking at non-stressed corn. You can see the whole plants are around 1,000 parts per million. But you can see that the, the lower third of the stalk is, a, is almost five times higher. And as we go up the stalk, the numbers drop, drop off dramatically at this stage of the game. That's the good news. What's the bad news? Well, if you're going to leave a third of the stalk out there, you're going to leave at least a third and not more of the dry matter. And right now, we are being challenged here in the Midwest. So what are we going to feed our ruminant cows and heifers and steers this winter when these crops are really, really drought stress. So our guideline is to go ahead and chop the crop naturally, take all the feedstuffs, and then manage nitrates after it goes through a fermentation. Well, we're starting to already harvest drought-stressed corn in some parts of the Midwest. We recommend not to use pasture or green chop because basically all the nitrates are there. And so you could be looking at that previous table of being somewhere in the intermediate or high end at this point. The real magic answer is to ensile the product. Uh, if we ensile it, we'll dissipate typically anywhere from 21 to 40 to 50 percent of the nitrates. The key there, however, if we're going to ensile is that we don't end up with a bunch of soup, as one farmer mentioned a couple of days ago. Uh, these plants are really wet. We're still looking at plants that look dead and drought stress well in excess of 75 percent water. So you got to let it dry down. This may occur if the plant really senesces or dies or it goes to its maturity. We would expect that had we not had this drought, we'd have been chopping corn silage in early August. So certainly in another two or three weeks, this, this plant is naturally going to start uh, maturing and the moistures may drop down at that point. You can bale it. Uh, you would uh, swat it like you would any other grass crop, allow, allow it to dry out. It may take several days if it's fairly wet at this stage to get down there. Be well aware in the drying process, the nitrate values are not going to change very much. And so you don't get that benefit that we see in the ensiling process. So here's a very busy slide that has kind of all the take-home messages. Let's go through modestly quickly. We already covered that fermentation can reduce the nitrate content. Uh, this is a Purdue study saying 36 to 41 percent. Certainly the moisture level of the corn sides, the extent of fermentation will impact that number. We already talked about high chop. Uh, one suggestion is a half to one ton of dry matter per foot. Uh, the, uh, a big range because uh, depending on uh, how tall the plant is, if there's a partial ear in there, if there's any starch in there, but it's certainly a guideline at this stage of the game. We highly recommend adding a bacteria inoculant, uh, primarily because the natural bacteria that would cause the fermentation to occur probably will not be not, non-existent in these plants. 
plants with a tremendous stress and heat conditions, these bacteria aren't going to survive very well. We would not add urea or an NPN source to it. This will delay the, the fermentation process. We have all kinds of nitrates. In fact, we're trying to get rid of them. And so the last thing we need to add is more uh, NPN here to the corn silage. Also, it's fairly basic and it will uh, delay the harvest, the, uh, the pH and the drop the pH. We want to get there as quickly as we can to make a good silage. Also, limestone would fit in that same category. Uh, some farmers add limestone, try to extend the fermentation. Well, trust me, we want to enhance the fermentation and get it started very, very quickly. I would not recommend adding corn or barley, other grains to the drought stress corn silage. Yes, we are missing starch, but I would rather add that at the time of feeding. Uh, the risk when you add dry corn or dry barley is that now you start changing dry matters and the, if the fermentation does not go well. Now we, 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 we've chased some very expensive feedstuffs uh, into a, a product that may not be very very valuable. Uh, a take-home message, certainly those of us who are going to silo this into upright silos, silo gases are going to be a huge risk. We argued never to go inside a silo with higher nitrates without having a supplemental oxygen source. Some people say you can run a blower. We get nervous about that. I think you need to have oxygen to go in there. It will take several weeks, and this gas is very, very lethal. So we don't want to have any people dying going into silos, uh, checking on, on silos and packing silos and things like that. We then finally recommend testing for nitrates after ensiling uh, because then we'll know what the numbers are and we can look at our strategies based on the level of nitrates and other feedstuffs on the farm. Two other points. First of all, uh, if it does rain, we know that the, the roots are very active yet and they will quickly suck up nitrates from the soil. If there's very little green material, then we can continue to, to accumulate nitrates in the plant itself. So be well aware that if it does rain, you don't want to be out there chopping. Uh, some uh, guidelines say to wait at least a week or 10 days to two weeks before trying to let this nitrate to actually shift into or, or produce into uh, live material. What about the cost of nitrate testing? This will vary the prices we're seeing in the Midwest anywhere from 8 to 10 to $12 per sample. So it's not a very expensive test and can be done very nicely. There are some field tests done uh, with a powder, but this can be somewhat dangerous because it involves sulfuric acid. And we've been very cautious uh, looking at this test. I think you just want to go to a lab and actually have it uh, measured as far as that goes. What about pricing drought stress corn silage? Uh, there'll be lots of challenges here, uh, certainly here in, in areas where there is drought stress corn and grain farmers who either are going to have insurance value and then are allowed to take the residue. Uh, one way to look at that is what is the fertilizer value, primarily the P and K in this crop, estimated around $30 to $40 per ton of dry matter. So certainly that has a value. So if the grain farmer says, well, these stalks have organic matter and nutrients, he is correct. Then be well aware it's going to be expensive to harvest this. One of our commercial operators told us last week he thinks it's going to cost almost twice as much to chop this corn silage because of the small stance and the, the ability of how quickly they can bring it in compared to conventional corn silage. So certainly you could be looking at one way of, of getting this price somewhere in that $80 to $100 per ton range for corn stocks. Very similar to prices being paid for some of the corn stocks that are being used to try to produce ethanol in Iowa with some of those companies over there. Another way is to price this forage based on on the RFQ, uh, how, how good is the feed value? So you have it tested. We highly recommend that. We understand it's going to vary, but get an idea how good uh, that forage value is. Uh, suggesting if we know what that test value is, it looks like the value certainly today is somewhere is between $1.10 and $1.30 per point of RFQ. So in an example here, if I had an RFQ of 120, which could be typical for some corn stock material or barren stocks, that could be worth around $130 to $150 per ton. And again, uh, just depends on the quality of the stocks, the market, the hay situation, all those things will come in as factors. So our take-home message is hopefully we've challenged you with on our discussion this morning. Uh, drought stress corn silage is going to be a viable alternative for livestock producers. Trust me, when November, December rolls around, we have to have forage inventories on our farms to feed these cattle. We are hearing both beef and dairy producers feeding hay right now. And of course, with the severe drought stress, there is no third, or fourth, or fifth crop coming in some areas here in the Midwest. We suggest delay harvesting until it's the optimal dry matter, depending if it's in a bag, bunker, pile, or upright 
silos and be aware if the plant has green tissue on it and we get some moisture, then the plant will continue to grow. You may not get any more, have any cob or starch fill at this point, but the plant will deposit more material and increase dry matter yield. Nitrates are a problem, concern. We need to manage them, be aware what it is, and decide how we're going to handle it on our individual farms. And finally, the value of draw stress uh, corn silage could vary from $90 to $150 a ton, depending on our calculations. Well, that completes our discussion for today. Thanks. Have a great day.